All right, all right. Welcome back, your buddy Chubs. It's Articulate with Steve McJones. And we're here this week with Taylor Stark, one of my blokes who is, she's, she's working on a major on public health. And she's doing a fine job. She's doing a bloody fine job at it. And, and she's doing, you're doing your best, love. I, I could tell. And, and, and you really, you really exude the energy, your, your passion for, for what you're doing here. And, and I think we can all really get along with that. And I think it, it, it captures the attention of, of me when I went back and listened to it. And, and it just, it's very, it's literally so important, literally so important. You, you have to get behind this. You have to listen to the words she says. You have to get with her and, and, and learn what you need to know. Become self-aware, better yourself through the world so you know what you're doing and the world knows what it's doing therefore in turn it's all better <laughs> that's what you gotta do that's, you, you gotta put your mind to what you wanna do you gotta find your passion you gotta find what you're good at you gotta, you gotta get out and you gotta bloody do it that's how you do it that's how you make it happen and, and you know what Taylor's doing it she's, she's putting her mind she's, she's, she's going out there she's teaching sex she's teaching love she, she's doing podcasts, you know, so bloody follow her on Instagram and whatnot and, and, and keep up with her because she's going places, love. She's going, you fucking child, she's going places. Oh, shit. That's so like, sick. So he's trying to go for that aesthetic a little mm. bit. And I mean, that's a type, right? Yeah. We should talk about, we should talk about types a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we should, for sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What you were saying before is like, uh, well, there's a good type versus a bad type, right? Yeah. And... A good type is someone who aesthetically is good looking, right? They try mm-hmm. with their style. And to whatnot. you, at least. It's you. personalized. Yeah, like. that's true. That's yeah. very true. Because mine, I feel like, is just dark eyes, dark hair mm-hmm. type stuff, you that's know? That's 100% your type. And, yeah, and like kind of paler skin a little yeah, bit. But yeah. like, and the, so that's not like trying with a style, you know? No, that's just no. based off of, of looks. But mm-hmm. there's also people who have like skater boy style, you know what I mean? Or something that's like so that. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. What's, what's your type? <coughs> <laughs> I don't know, honestly. I feel like my type is anyone that's not mainstream Mm-hmm. I feel like people nowadays are so mainstream. Mm-hmm. They're so focused on like their social media presence and like all that shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think you. <laughs> you like people that are based, based in originality. A little bit, yeah. Cause you know everyone likes the same artists, the same shit. I feel like someone that likes like different things. Like I was telling you before, like the Instagram. Mm-hmm. I hate when people's Instagrams are so like. Just like, them posting pictures. Yeah, literally. I like when people like, will like post a picture or like the next slide is like something they care about, like a, I don't know, like a fun they care about, like a campaign or something. Like mm-hmm. that is so cool to me. But if it's... Well, like, you're also... What's your major again? Public health. Public health? Yeah. So, I mean, that definitely appeals to that side of you. Yeah, because like it's like the... It's like the public policy thing and everything that's going on right now, like Black Lives Matter, like all this shit is happening. Yeah. So, it's like almost if you're not talking about that like on your social media platforms like what are you doing well definitely after this summer i feel that hardcore like yeah you like the black square thing remember when that was huge Mm -hmm. like the blackout thing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that was like a big indicator of like all right what are we actually using our social media for i feel like it was also telling like people not like people who did do the black square, like, oh, wow, you're really into it. Mm-hmm. But like those who didn't was super telling. So it's like if something so simple as like just posting a black square and like right. doing a blackout thing. Mm-hmm. That is so little for like such an important message. cause and yeah. movement and message. Mm-hmm. And like because it's not just like a social media thing. It's like right. it's real life. And people deal with this shit all the mm-hmm. time. And it's like. Which was why it was uh, kind of stupid for me. Like when people were getting mad that people didn't post anything else but the black square. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's who do you like, think was getting mad? Like, like or, people like, who are too leftist, you know? <laughs> Not too leftist, but they're going against the point of the movement. The point was, like you said, it's just like one of the easiest things you can do. At least do that, you know? At least yeah. post the... Whereas some people are, were just like, oh, that's all you did was post the black square? You know? Yeah. It's like, you that... I don't know. And you haven't, like, posted anything else about it or whatever. Right. It was just, like, annoying. That was just unnecessary, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? That whole, no, that whole situation that. was very telling. I feel like it was a big, 
part of our lives. Yeah, it, it's crazy, and it's happening, and, like, we're conscious of it, you know what I mean? And we're right. going to look back at it and be like, holy shit, I lived through this. Yeah. And I talked about this, and I'm trying to, like, advocate for like it. Like, the 2008 recession, I have no memory of, you know what I mean? 9-11, yes. no idea. Yeah. But, like, this one for us was, like, our big one, you know? Real. And this year was, I mean, everyone says it, like, 2020 sucked, obviously, but, like, seriously, so many things happened, like... Mm-hmm. The presidential election, Black Lives Matter. Oh yeah. All all of these things, like mm-hmm. it's, I don't know, it's on, on it's like crazy a bigger scale than typical, and like forty four million people are unemployed right now, or whatever it's so, it is. Yeah, it's so fucking crazy. Yeah, it's but it's also like, I don't know, like you said, it's very impactful, and I think it showed me a lot about myself personally. When everything hit, I just completely. You wanna you wanna know who you know, the, the real people in your life are, you know, you want to know who exactly. you like love, right? I feel like that's what this year did too. Mm-hmm. I feel like this year I have cut ties with a number of people for like so many different reasons. And some, but people... what it comes down to is like, who's going to go through this real shit with me and who am I going to want to go through this real shit with me? You exactly. know? Exactly. Yeah. And that's where I think the love, you know, so this, this episode is supposed to be about love, right? It is. So, yeah. So I feel like for me, I, I had a person that I kind of loved before. Like I I was like, oh, she could be the one or something, Mm -hmm. you know, or like we get along really well and you know, it's just kind of works really well together. Mm -hmm. And then this thing hit and it's like, I immediately just attached myself to that person for some reason. I I was just like, yeah. Cause I was like, I was like this is the end of the world. Like I want to go out loving somebody, you know what I mean? With all all the love that I have. That's all anyone wants. Like you just, you want to find someone to love and you want them to love you back. That's all it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, and she didn't love me back and you know, Mm -hmm. and that's fine. Like, but for me, that was just such a devastating blow, Mm -hmm. you know, and then you kind of come out of it and realize like, your family, you love your family, you know? For real. And, and your friends and, and like your peers and mm-hmm. your coworkers and like all these different people. Yeah. And yeah. if you think about it, the end of the world is always, you know, you could die at any moment, you know? So it's like you should love. For real, you could die tomorrow. We could both die tomorrow. Like yeah. you have no idea. Right. So to, to kind of, I'll come back to that a little mm-hmm. bit, but I want to like go over the different types of love, like the different stages and everything, right? Mm -hmm. So there's like that first initial stage of love that we've talked about before, which is like that initial attraction. Somebody's your type, right? Mm -hmm. Or like you or you just think they're very, very... Are they like giving... I feel like they could be your type or maybe they're giving you the attention that like you want. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. So I wanted to ask you, do you believe in, in love at first sight? Honestly... I feel like it's so tricky because it goes back to like your types. I feel like if you are like talking to someone who is your type and they're like reciprocating that energy to you, you're like, wow, like I really, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, yeah, oh, wow, this no. is love at first sight. I yeah. feel like there has to be so many factors that contribute to that. Mm-hmm. I would say so. I don't know if I've ever experienced it, mm-hmm. but like I, I, I can 100% understand people, people who, yeah, it. yeah, totally. I think. I don't know. I, I like me as the romantic. I, I personally am. Are you a romantic? Yeah, I was actually going to bring that up too. Yeah. So I have, back in high school and everything, when times would get tough or whatever, my escapism was like film and like TV and everything, right? So I think it really fed into this idea of like a perfect relationship or like mm-hmm. romanticizing, you know, just even the smallest interactions with like girls or like yeah, yeah. little relationships that you go through. Like you kind of see... I don't know. In most movies, rom com is even its own like genre. You know, mm-hmm. that's <laughs> like, the thing with like media, though. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. It definitely mm-hmm. influences you. So I think for sure, I talked about this in my English class when I was a senior with my professor, Jill Fritz, uh, amazing woman. But, amazing woman. Yeah, Shout out. <laughs> shout out. Uh, <laughs> she actually listens to some of these, but um, mm. she pointed out like we did like a test, and it was like romantic versus realist right Mm -hmm. and she pointed out that I'm like a romantic because like I don't know so the idea of love at first sight when you think about it logically we are just attracted to people because of sex you know what I mean like we're attracted because of like the reproduction system Mm -hmm. or whatever women are actually if they smell like the BO of a man right (laughs) that's like like a a turn on yeah it's a yeah (laughs) you know the the thing yeah yeah for sure so it's like 
it's almost that initial, but it could be any person out. You yeah, know, yeah. it could be any person. Mm-hmm. You have no idea what their baggage is, what their background is. Mm-hmm. Just, but just based on, like you said, if, if it's your type or whatever, it's mm-hmm. that initial like, okay. So, but the romantic in me believes that personally, I feel like that love at first sight that doesn't mean much mm-hmm. could, you know, it, it would be a really mm-hmm. slim chance. You know what I mean? It'd be a really slim chance. But if that if that person is your type and then you just happen to end up like your personalities end up matching together yeah. really well you know that's the thing that could happen right no, like, it definitely yeah mm-hmm. i definitely can yeah i can see that happening with people yeah and so i don't know oh excuse my birchwood fireplace birchwood i'm just restarting <laughs> i'm just restarting the video over again how long was it? Um, to set the um, I wish it was longer. I feel like it There's should like be. There's like a 24-hour one for sure. I mean, this one's pretty good. So yeah, this one's pretty it. solid. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to mess it all yeah, up. Yeah, it know? starts with like the little trickle. The little so. trickle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyways, I don't know. I feel like love at first sight can exist, but it's got to be just real, real rare. Yeah, I feel like with anything though, like it exists obviously, but hmm. it's totally unique to everyone. Of course it exists. Mm-hmm. Just because I haven't experienced it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. But mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure it does with someone. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. and then so to get past that initial stage of like love, like that love at first sight. Okay. And also I did want to say that's like that love at first sight thing I feel like is your high school crush type of love. that we, We've talked about this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like that initial, like that's all you have in high school is people that like fit your type or like are attractive, right? Mm-hmm. So... And then you're, it's just a very small pool of people. It's so true. it's like, you're kind of just like, oh, this is love for sure. Like, I want to definitely yeah. do something with this person. Again, it's your first experience. So you don't know what you want to do with that person. Right. <clears throat> but then I, I feel like, again, we've talked about this, but you, you kind of, in college, you chase that a little bit more. And then you start realizing that it's not as reliable as, as you like it to be. A lot of those people yeah. that you're initially attracted to are just not your type at all, That's personality so wise. Yeah. And, and so that intrigues me to think that it continues developing, right? Like, right mm-hmm. now, again, like, I thought that person was the love of my life, right? Yeah. No, I feel the same. I totally feel the same way. Mm-hmm. Because I, you know, we've talked about this. I just got out of, like, a decently long relationship, like, three and a half years. And, you know, I thought I was going to be with him forever. And in my mind, he was completely my type. Looks-wise, personality, humor. Like, humor is a huge thing for me. Mm -hmm. And I just, I really thought it was him, but it ended up not being him. And that's, like, a really hard blow, but Mm -hmm. it's just, like, it's accepting. I feel like everything happens for a reason in in some way. Like, Mm -hmm. especially with you, too. Like, Well, I mean, like, coming out of it was the part where you learn. It's the part where you learn, right? No, definitely. I was meditating on it recently and I came to this conclusion where I just kind of had to laugh because like mm-hmm. when you look at it from like a third person perspective, you're just like, bro, I'm 22. I don't know shit about exactly. love. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, again, there's, there's people who get lucky. I don't know. Do you have anybody in your high school that, um, oh, yeah. that have been like married? Yeah. So I actually, yeah. So I had this girl I went to high school with and she was dating this guy like in middle school, I want to say, like mid to early middle school, mm-hmm. all throughout high school, never dated anyone else, and they just got engaged like a couple months ago, and I was like, really? holy yeah, shit. Yeah, I was like, wow, like, I can't relate, but holy shit, like, good for you. Yeah. But, and, I don't know, it's crazy to me. Well, and so I feel like the years after high school, personally, like 18 through 21, are very influential years, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they're very big years for me, so... Mm-hmm. To see people, like, now starting to get married, settle down, it's like, mm. I kind of, like, if you've been with that person through those, those like, a, three, four years or whatever yeah, it is, true. it's like, damn, I kind of get it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, maybe they got lucky or maybe they figured something out that we haven't figured yeah. out. I think it might be a little of both because, I don't know, when I see people who have been together since, like, I don't know, a young age, middle school, how old are you, like, 13, mm-hmm. 12, 14, I don't know, something crazy Yeah, like we're that. in high school, freshman year of high yeah, school, like, yeah. 15, I think. You know, right. Like, your college years, or if you don't go to college, you know, like, your early 20s, late teens are very telling, very influential. You meet a lot of people during that time, and 
you don't necessarily know the type of person you want to be with when you're like, because me personally, when I was 17, I was dating my ex-boyfriend and I am, I, I don't want to say a completely different person, but I'm a pretty different person from, I'm 21 years old now. I was oh, a completely yeah. different person from when I was oh, 17 yeah. years old. You know what I mean? Like I'm a different person from who I was when I was a sophomore here. Completely. You know? yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> from like last year, like half a year ago, like you... I feel like when you um, are in your late teens, early 20s, like, you start changing so much quicker oh, yeah. than you did, like, earlier ages, because you're exposed to different people, new environments. If you do choose to go to college, completely different environments, new people, it's your just... type could completely change, your outlook on life could change, like, what you want in life could completely change. Oh, yeah. If I never would have went to college, I don't, I probably would have had a different outlook on life and love and all of that stuff so right. that like your environment and people so, and that's around. what i'm saying like imagine this is how we think about love right now but imagine like after you move into the adult world or exactly whatever, you know yeah and i feel like that's where it kind of gets scary because that's kind of where the pressure's on to meet somebody right yeah and then you get into your 30s and i feel like that's got to be a whole an entire different experience right. in itself. it so totally it's like, is because like you feel like you're missing out now what you're experiencing now and you're about to you're about to graduate like any day now like you're about to leave and go to a completely different place like yeah and with that comes like a new mindset and like right what and, you want yeah. well it's kind of scary honestly i've been it thinking is, about it it's a terrifying lot. yeah because you can just like leave like do you remember when you first came to college and you can just be like oh i can just be anybody I yeah. want. like i can yes. act however i want i can just form everything I hate my freshman year self. I hate her. Oh, yeah. No, me too. Don't worry about like, it. Like, she sucks. I didn't have a beard. Imagine that. Me without a beard? Come on. <laughs> disgusting. Just, <laughs> Literally disgusting. Not disgusting. Yeah. Just so young. Mm -hmm. So young. So young. <laughs> Do it. Do it. We should get these out of the way right now. I know, now. I know. I, I, we haven't said it once this whole time. That's very shocking. That was my bad. I slipped into it. Uh... <laughs> But, yeah, so, I, I don't know. I, I remember being, <laughs> this is a funny story, actually. I remember being, it must have been, like, fifth grade, and I rode the bus, and this cute girl moved across the street from me. And I had this other guy that lived on the street with me as well, who was, like, two grades older than me. Mm -hmm. So he was, like, seventh or eighth grade, and I was, like, fifth or sixth. Mm -hmm. And we, I mean, this girl, she's attractive. I was the fuckboy on the bus, you know, the fuckboy-like sure. kid. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Dude, I was so annoying on the bus. But, different story. <laughs> But anyway, she like kind of like fucked with it, and we like mm -hmm. tried to hang out a little bit. And I told this dude in fifth or sixth grade, I was like, "Yo, man, I, there's just no way around it. She she moved across the street from me in the whole entire world. Like, how else? Like, like how else would odds? this happen? What are the odds, bro? Like, we're in love. Like, <laughs> we're she's meant the to one. Be. Yeah, yeah. And so that's what kind of comes on with this first stage of love. This is what I mm -hmm. researched a little bit. Mm -hmm. Is you know the brain literally supports that idea when you first like have that initial attraction you know mm -hmm. it, it it makes everything that you do from then on like once you start to feel that like it, it, it puts those red glasses on have you ever heard that phrase where it's like you can't see red flags yeah, yeah, yeah. when you're wearing mm -hmm. flower colored glasses yeah. or whatever like rose colored glasses yeah mm -hmm. rose colored yeah that's exactly it but it, it it actually does that because like it makes all of the rest of the bullshit worth it you know like yeah and as long as you have that one thing where, you know, you have your ups and downs in life, right? Mm -hmm. Just kind of, you have something that will, like, make you feel really, really happy. Like, you just got into college or you just passed an exam that was really mm -hmm. important to you. Or you just got a job that you really liked or whatever. And then you set up all these expectations, right? And then at any moment, if something bad happens, that completely changes your expectations mm -hmm. of the future. You just get brought down. Yeah. You just got, so coronavirus happens. We're all brought like... Especially when you're young. I oh, mean, coronavirus yeah. obviously affects everyone. Well, you dream bigger the younger you are. Yeah, sure. absolutely. So like when, when you're in middle school and you feel an exam, you're like, wow, like, fuck my life. <laughs> what am I going to do with my life? Or like you get broken up with. You're like, what am I going to do now? Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. And and that's where like the love thing comes in, where it's like, mm -hmm. well, at least I have this. But when you don't have that, then what? It's such a comfortable fallback. Like everything else could be going wrong, but I am feeling loved by someone. You're like, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's almost weird because like you have love from your family, right? You have right. love from your close friends, mm -hmm. but it's not in the same way. 
life. No, it's at different. All, yeah. Which is weird. Which is interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's actually one of the different types. So there's this guy. I didn't write down his name, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But he theorized that love is like the, like the color wheel, whatever that is, like the primary colors yeah. and stuff like that. So like there's the three primary types, right? Mm-hmm. And there's eros, which is like loving an ideal person with like passion basically like mm-hmm. erotic eros erotic you know what i mean mm-hmm. and it's very physical and it's very emotional and that's like that really like gripping high that you get from that that type that you're talking yeah, about yeah. That, you know that you attach to immediately mm-hmm. and like that's the good one but how often is this person person actually ideal that's when those right. like those glasses kick in that kind of mm-hmm. make you think like oh everything's amazing right now you don't want to admit their flaws right yeah there's also ludos which is um love as a game which is the one that i don't really understand which was i was wondering if you would have mm-hmm. anything like it's playful and fun but it's not really a form of commitment do you know like any, yeah <laughs> yeah you do <laughs> you do a little bit like that a little bit. <clears throat> but i but i feel like that form is is beneficial in itself because it's like a, a like a minuscule example each time you like fuck around with somebody yeah of like okay well that's not what i want or mm-hmm. that what that is what i want yeah I feel like, you know, I just got out of a long relationship, so, you know, obviously I was, like, playing the field a bit, like, talking to other people mm-hmm. afterwards, you know, not to make myself feel better, but, you know, that kind of happens, like, yeah, I've been you have for companionship sure. yeah. for years on end. And you're like, uh, alright, well, I guess I'm free now, like, right. I'm and you're like, I can do whatever, so mm-hmm. it's like... And the game always seems so fun to, like, exactly. you hear people like, oh, yeah. yeah, you know. Exactly, and everyone's different, so you find someone that like you know kind of fits you a bit so it's like it's a game a little bit Mm -hmm. like you enjoy their company you're like you enjoy their attention but like you don't want anything more than that Mm -hmm. and that sounds super shitty super toxic which i totally understand but i don't know i feel like i think as long as you make it clear yeah no absolutely yeah especially that's the thing with um and like one-sided relationships or like it's so important to make it super clear because you know i mean we've all been there like you're more attached or vice versa someone else is very attached Mm -hmm. and you don't feel the same Mm -hmm. and it doesn't come out until i don't know weeks later months later exactly and that's where communication is so important because and and you know something you need to work on because honestly like you don't even realize half of the time when you're not when you should be telling somebody like you oh it's just a mutual understanding right Right. it's just like a thing but not always because you can't when you assume that, that's not always true at all. Right. Because you don't know someone else's intentions or their thoughts until... You talk about it. You talk about it. And it's so... You know, I never used to think about, like, communication skills or, like, things like this when it comes to relationships or... I mean, I used to think of just relationships as, like, you know, long-term... Right. Like, boyfriend, girlfriend, etc. You know what I mean? But that relationships can be with, like, friends, like... Just people you're talking to in passing. Like, for me, example, when I first got out of my um, most recent longer relationship, like, I would talk to... I talked to a handful of people in passing, and, you know, some of them were very short-lived, but the others that were a bit longer that I didn't know if I wanted to continue for long-term, like, it's kind of on you to communicate that and be, like, a mature person. Right. And just, like, communicate your intentions, because if not, like someone's feelings can be hurt or your feelings can be hurt or Mm -hmm. anything like that so and i think that's again like that matureness is growing out of that high school mindset and like realizing that that instant initial reaction like oh this person's cool and attractive Mm -hmm. is not the end all be all exactly yeah yeah and i i feel realizing that you don't want to settle you just got out of a relationship so you're not trying to exactly and you know, everyone like in call. I don't. I'm not gonna say everyone. That's a total lie. But mm-hmm. I feel like um, a, a good amount of people in college or like college age people are completely looking like you're gonna date someone. You have to marry them. Mm-hmm. That's not necessarily true. Right. Like every. I feel like every situation you're in is like every relationship is like a lesson mm-hmm. in some way, like good or bad. Yeah. And that's been like the hardest thing for me. Like my mom. My mom, right. yes, she yeah. harps on that a lot. She harps she's on what? like, you don't have. She's like, she always is like, you don't have to date to marry, right. especially right now. Like when I just got out of my last relationship, you know, I would tell her like, oh, this guy's messaging me, but like, 
I don't really like this about him. I don't like this about him. Mm -hmm. And she was like, you don't know and? any. Yeah. <laughs> she's, like, I'm like, she's like, you don't know anything about him. Like, you don't have to date to marry. Yeah. Like, everything's an experience. Like, you don't know anything about them. Also, a good thing. Um, I don't know if this is a good point. Like, a good um, place to transition. But I feel like it's really important to cherish, like, your time by yourself. Oh, like, your alone yeah. time. Self-love is so important <laughs> and like everyone is like self-love self-love but like but like masturbation <laughs> seriously no but dead ass i'm doing a, a project in masturbation right now it's so important really yeah a project on oh, masturbation yeah you're yeah, allowed I, to do I, that for class yeah yeah i mean well it's in my human sexualities class so like to oh, expect it but yeah for sure yeah but masturbation is important but if you are not a fan of it don't do it That's, don't do it yeah yeah but it does make it makes you feel incredibly empowered it makes you know your body more. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. this is such a tangent. No, it's we, we can well, go it's into that. Very, it's, yeah, for yeah. sure. I'm, I'm definitely in. Yeah, yeah. It's another thing with like relationships and hookups, especially now. Like social media has such like a crazy expectation mm -hmm. on body types, like sex expectation. And I've been looking into. Well, I haven't been looking into it. I've had a lot of assignments recently about porn and like porn education. And it's super important to, like, educate youth on porn, I feel like, in my opinion. Because oh, 100%. It's, because like, it's honestly a terrible industry in it's itself. A, it is. I mean... It's addictive. Yeah, it's addictive. I don't want to say it's a terrible industry, only because, like, you know, sex workers, like, you know, that's their job, and, like, they make yeah, money from that, but that's fair. it's not intended for children. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like, you know, I was watching porn as a child, like... A lot of people were. Mm -hmm. I remember in fifth grade looking at boobs on Google. Yeah, boobs. <laughs> B O B Z. With two, yeah. Boobs with two Z's. <laughs> and, and zeros for. Yeah, those. literally. <laughs> like, like I'm not gonna say it. All people do it because I'm not gonna discriminate against anyone who didn't. But mm -hmm. a lot of people did, and it's like, it just creates such an unrealistic expectation, mm -hmm. you know, for anything. That's anything with social oh, media. Yeah. Relationships, like types types right now like mm -hmm. they are completely ever-changing like right. i was just thinking about that recently like this is so random i was thinking about like clothing style how it changes so often oh, like yeah. i feel like now it's like a lot of indie like street style wear yeah yeah, yeah like sure. street style wear is super in and mm -hmm. like a year ago it was maybe not, even a little yeah, more two, a year and a half ago years, yeah yeah sure not even different. close so it's which is great for me because i fit into this street. there you go yeah, yeah. It, bro it's like it's exhausting keeping up with like styles and yeah. like yeah all this and that's my thing right now i'm like i'm trying to like get off social media a well bit more, i think there, so there has like, to be a point where you develop away from the style and we'll come yeah. back to the to the porn thing because mm -hmm. i definitely want to come back to that mm -hmm. but i, I it's think it's a good point yeah, yeah uh, but i think that clothing in itself like yeah you're influenced for sure by a lot of people around you like you said when you were young you're, you're influenced mm -hmm. and you don't really know what's going on so you want to kind of fit in mm -hmm. but i think as you get older like personally for me there has to be events that instead of you just going shopping all the time to mm -hmm. like fit in or whatever, yeah. I think there has to be events in your life that cause you to want to change style. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I feel like you got to stick with something for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I got all my clothes stolen and this was... <laughs> That's a significant event. Right, <laughs> right. And this was after coronavirus and this yeah. is when I was kind of... I'm still... I, I've been in the transition to go on to the next life mm -hmm. <laughs> for forever, basically. The adult world for or whatever. Forever. So I've been considering going and, and buying a lot of clothes and mm -hmm. that uh, event was very cataclysmic is that the word i don't know it, it was, yeah it, it, it definitely affected i was like okay well i can go out and try all these new things yeah, that, yeah. I, that i want to mm -hmm. and now with doing all that you know i can wear a, a cardigan a cardi I, the, a cardi to work yeah a cardi to work if i want to you know yeah, what i mean yeah. I actually read uh, a couple podcast episodes back. It was actually before coronavirus and everything. Mm -hmm. It was like things you should know as you get older or something like that. And it was just like a core website or something. Uh -huh. It was really dumb. But it had like a list of things that people recommend, like big realizations they've had and stuff like that. And like something that helps a lot f for people is to reinvent themselves like every five years basically or something like that really yeah huh. and so it's like every five years you got to take a step back and be like all right really who am i mm -hmm. who am i now as compared kind to of before like, yeah right and, and reassess like 
should I get a tattoo or no? Nah, that's something yeah. like that. Yeah, should I change my hair? Should I change my style? Right, yeah. exactly. Changing your style is such like a a big deal. It's hard. Yeah, it's really hard. Um, it's it's really hard, and I am like, I am really in the stage. I just have been like very conscious of it in the past couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. I'm like trying to. I'm not trying to change my style, but, like, a little bit. And I feel like it might be, like, my five-year mark, maybe, because, like... Yeah. yeah. Well, I've no. just been, like... I've been, like, realizing... And maybe it is my breakup. And honestly, like, this is a sign. Like, going through a breakup is so shitty, but, like... It's also really good in a way, because it's, like, you're spending more time with yourself. Mm-hmm. You're realizing things that you actually like. And you are, like, redefining yourself, for sure. Mm-hmm. And I feel like your style comes along with that and I'm I'm like in my in the process of redefining my style right now yeah. it's very hard but I mean it's yeah. it's a little empowering in a sense like it feels For really sure. good because yeah. you're not basing it off of what your relationship was anymore you know exactly yeah, yeah. and I feel like you subconsciously do that sometimes like you're comfortable mm-hmm. with I don't know your partner or with yourself um that might not always be what you want. Um, it but might you don't be know like, it until... No, you don't know it until you're alone. And that goes circles own. back to what how you were important... Saying, yeah, being how alone, important self-love. it is. Self-love. Self-love and, and just masturbation like... Masturbation and porn. And masturbation and porn. Yes, and I wanted to come back to... Yeah, go porn. go ahead. Take the lead. <laughs> Literally porn. <laughs> Literally porn. <laughs> uh, I wanted to come back to it. Have you ever seen the movie Don John before? Uh, it's this movie with Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Yeah, no, I have not seen it, but, but I have seen many it's trailers. It's this guy that's, like, actually addicted to porn. And he's, like, an attractive guy. He's got mm-hmm. a lot going on for him and, like, whatnot. And he's got Scarlett Johansson, like, this 10 out of 10. They throw Beautiful this whole, ass woman. Yep. Yeah, like, scene where they talk about that. Oh, I also want to redact my statement earlier. Yeah, I don't think the porn industry is terrible or mm-hmm. anything but like I, that. I wasn't trying but to, like, um, not come for you either. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Sometimes, like, you... Sometimes you say things and it's not necessarily what you mean. You know what I mean? Like right, yeah. yeah. Well, it, 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 you know, there there are in parts. A sense there of it, are parts yeah. that, to the in the porn industry that are bad. No, definitely, sure. it's it's damaging to maybe youth or like people that are addicted to it, but mm-hmm. it doesn't. Well, mean and, it's that, inherently and, and that's terrible. the whole point of the movie is like it is an addiction, and like yeah. there, there are a bunch of addiction movies about drugs, but like that's the only one that I've heard of about porn addiction. You know, yeah. like kind of him getting over that, and like he has this this banging hot like porn star girlfriend mm-hmm. right but in the end it doesn't compare to porn because like he's comparing everything to porn right know? yeah so i yeah i mean to talk about masturbation again <laughs> to bring masturbation i i just i think it is really beneficial for a lot of people but it is important like you said to to make sure people have knowledge on it so that way they don't get addicted yeah. or they don't become too reliant on yeah. it. Yeah. And I don't want to circle back again, but it's very um It all it all comes together. Yeah, no it does. And we all and we all come together. We all do. And it's like I said, I don't want to circle back, but I actually just had literally a discussion post like a couple days ago. Literally a discussion <laughs> post a couple yeah. days ago. Yeah. Um for my human sexuality is uh course. I, we had to watch this um episode about I can't remember who who did it but i watched it on amazon prime i think and they were talking like in depth about like porn education and like porn addiction mm-hmm. and when i first read the prompt it was like what are your thoughts on porn addiction like what are your thoughts on porn education should we do it and at first i was like obviously like but then i i watched the documentary more and i was like it is like a it is a real addiction like porn addiction is real right but Sex addiction is real. Drug addiction is True. real. All, all those, all those vices are well, completely real. Is, is it? Yeah. Thing in itself. Completely, like, it's a disease. It's a totally real thing. Mm-hmm. And and this is another tangent, but sex education, comprehensive, factual sex education, is that in itself? And you know, in Ohio, you don't have. Did you know in Ohio, you, many places like they don't have to provide comprehensive factual sex education a lot of schools are just really? like yeah a lot of majority There's of not schools like a mandate or anything? no 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 a lot of schools are just like abstinence only not comprehensive really? not even factual because well, a lot of I bet ohio has a lot of private schools like yeah that. exactly and i'm sure that's a lot of other states as well but i've been learning a lot about ohio obviously because we're in ohio and mm-hmm. i'm in a public health major so we talk a lot about like sex, sex education and health subjects similar to that Mm -hmm. and um there's not a priority to be 
comprehensive and factual, which is extremely damaging to youth because how many people, I don't know about you, but I was in a, I went to a public middle school, high school. I knew people in middle school who were pregnant and actively having sex and they had no idea about it because our sex education was done by gym teachers, random people who... (laughs) Gym teachers. For real. Like, I I don't know about anyone else, but I know in Ohio, at least, a lot of people, at least when I heard about in class when we would share, was there are gym teachers who had no idea about the curriculum. They were thrown into it, which is obviously not their fault. But Mm -hmm. comprehensive sex education is so important because it not only is it an addiction, but you have if if you're taught abstinence only is completely damaging Mm -hmm. and some parents will not allow their children to like you i know a lot of people can opt out of like can your kids learn about comprehensive sex education and a lot of parents will opt out of it Mm -hmm. for religious reasons or what what not but it's just so important because abstinence only education is so not only damaging, it's completely misleading, mm-hmm. and it's just... It's not realistic. It's not realistic, yeah, exactly. It's not realistic, it's not realistic and because... I, I, I kind of have been thinking about this a lot recently, too, and I think that's one of the generational things that we're going to have to get over. It is, is, yeah. Like, there's this... I get, like, protecting youth, you know Absolutely. what I mean? Like, I understand the idea of protecting innocence, and... Yeah, and, you don't... No one wants their middle school child to... I don't want to say it, but, I mean, be, be middle school children may be having sex or doing whatever. You know, no parent is like, oh, yeah, I want my, like, middle school child to be having sex. But right. realistically, it does happen because mm-hmm. your curiosity starts at such a young age. Mm-hmm. And... Well, there's a book, uh, Brave New World, where it explores, um, like, a dystopian future, right? But in that dystopian future, a lot of it is sex-based. And... Part of that is there's, like, games that the kids play. This is, like, a very fucked up version of it, but mm-hmm. there's games that the kids play where they, like, explore their sexual... Yeah. Uh, but at, like, the ages of, like, nine, you know exactly. what I mean? Like, very young. But the thing is, like, your sexual curiosity begins at... I don't know exactly. I'm not going to quote anything, but just in common sense and learning about it um, in passing, like, your sexual curiosity begins at such a young age. Mm-hmm. So... I'm not going to blame it on parents. It's not parents' fault Well, that's what I'm all. saying. Like, yeah, it's yeah. the generational type of thing where it's like before it's always protect this. Um, you know, people shouldn't be exposed to, to this or it's whatever. Just an, but we're all being exposed to everything now because exactly. of the internet. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, sex is a... Sex sells. That's that's the thing. It's it's everywhere. Right. You don't realize it. And you it. can it's... see it in the media before, like in the 50s and everything. Yeah. Obviously, ever since advertising has been around or whatever. But I think it's on such a major scale right now that everybody is being advertised to all the time. So like you said, sex sells is like people are going to explore these things no matter what. And if you put a, a phone in front of a kid when he's in first grade or the, them or whenever they are, you know what I mean? They're, yeah. they're going to come up. They're going to stumble upon these things that they don't understand and that nobody has told them about. Absolutely. And, and I think, but that I think that's where our generation is going to be different than the last generation. Because we grew up with that, I think we're going to be able to talk to kids a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, and mm-hmm. I was going to, this is what I've been thinking about a lot, mm-hmm. is like even religion, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. teaching in a private school is like you're teaching these kids like a literal definition of a man floating in the sky. When there's mm-hmm. a lot more definitions of religion that should be explored like mentally and like what you're going to actually go through in life, you know? And why it pertains to somebody's mental state or like how it actually relates and it doesn't even have to be religious but i don't think religious religion should be taboo i think it should be tied into like i was watching cosmos i told you i started cosmos yeah great he, great show by which the way which is a great show amazing that, and, show yeah. i definitely recommend checking out the new seasons because there's a lot of you know if neil degrasse tyson says anything i'm gonna believe him because i love that fellow absolutely um, who, who wouldn't yeah <laughs> exactly um but i also feel like you know he's on the precipice of learning new things and, and he's very there's so many new things and in this world where there's no hope at all and everything seems um depressed and anxiety, you know everything's gonna like end soon probably he mm, in this probably. season <laughs> he, he explores like the hope that we do have and yeah um, but part of that was like you know exploring the ideals behind like actual religion and like mm-hmm. how psychology and science relate to it yeah. and so i think there's i think there's a point where we have to we have to bridge this gap of what we actually have to tell our kids. Mm-hmm. And starting with sex education, I feel like that's a very basic one. It is, and it's it's very sad the lack of um, 
I don't know, factual. Commitment? Yeah, yeah, and just sexual education. Everywhere is just abstinence only, and a lot of that is religion based. Which, and that's not shaming anyone who's religious. And I actually was, you know, as like a younger child through elementary school, middle school, um, I had to go to church. Like, every Sunday. I, had I went to, to Catholic school for the four, first four years of my life. Really? Yeah. And look at you now. Yeah, and look at me now. <laughs> yeah. And I went to church until I was 18. Yeah, I went to church until I was, I don't know, probably, I don't even remember, freshman in high school, maybe maybe a stop a little bit before, but I had to go every Sunday, and I... I think it instills more of a, a fear in people based on morality yeah, than actually that's the thing. promoting, it's like... Am I gonna, like Mm-hmm. I don't know. There I'm are good ideas. But I'm not trying to talk shit about religious people. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, there are a lot of good ideas that we learn. Like you said, look at us now. Like, we're yeah. here talking about mature things. Yeah. And things that we should be doing. Yeah. But. I feel like it says a lot, especially... I never went to a strictly Catholic school. Or you said you did when you were... Or what did you say? Yeah, uh, private, yeah private school. Yeah. Private school, yeah. So was it like abstinence only, or did you have any? Well, I mean, it was first through fourth grade, so they weren't okay. teaching us. Oh, okay, that yeah, shit. so that's early on, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, But, um, not to go off on a tangent, but we talk about this a lot, and when to start um, sexual education, when to talk about, like, actual, bo- like, correct body autonomy. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's very taboo, like, as a young age, should be like, Oh, you have a vagina. You have a penis. This is what. This is that and that. And mm-hmm. a lot of people will stray away from it, but yeah. it's like why? Because when you do that um, to your kids, or even like as yourself growing up, it's like it kind of makes like your autonomy and like sex and everything like that seem completely taboo. And oh yeah, it's a totally <laughs> natural process. Yeah. And, like it's funny because yeah. there's this John Mulaney bit where he talks about. Um, He's like this. He goes to this like kind of adult party, and there's this little girl there, and she's like talking out of, out of nowhere. She just goes like, "Uncle John has a penis" or whatever, and everyone's like, oh. and then he like gets out of the situation. It's kind of funny, right? But he's like, he's like, you know, if if somebody, if uh, you know, Aunt Lori would have been like, if, if she would have been like, she has a vagina, and she would be like, yes, and it's beautiful and it's <laughs> wonderful, and like, everybody would be like, yeah, would start clapping for yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. But it's like we yeah. sh- that should that should be the way that it is for everybody. You know? Absolutely, and it's and nowadays it's more um, it's different because like the LGBTQ plus, you know what I mean. Like we're all viewing ourselves in different ways, identifying ourselves in different ways, and that's like amazing. And those who don't support it is just another topic. But <laughs> you know what I mean. Like we'll talking, get Sarah on for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, I would love to have Sarah as like a co co host, like right here. But, yeah. Yeah, just, edu- it just all starts with education. This isn't like my public health thing coming out, but it just starts with education as a young age. Oh, and sure. we've been taught, I've been talking about this in class, like talking about these um, more like terminal, terminal terms? No, that's not right. More like, um, like factual, kind yeah. of like, like. I know what you mean. You, like yeah. terms that are long lasting and that exactly. aren't gonna change with Exactly. The times like you don't wanna like tell like your um small child that like, oh yeah, your vagina, no, that's your like your cookie or something. Or right. like something really like that. Because well, like I mean, and, and that goes very, into like um Well that's all like, like and this yeah. is saying retarded used to be very accepted and you call yeah. retarded people retarded. Right and, and it's changed. Don't do now. that like, shit. Like, you yeah. do that, stop saying that shit. Right, you can't say don't that. Don't say that. Don't say that. You'll and, be if you're not called out, you're not, if you're not being called out for saying the word, and I'm saying it right now, if you're not being called out for saying the word retarded, you're or hanging like, out with the wrong people. I'm just going to say like that. Or like, you know, relating to gay people that have Yeah, word. exactly. <laughs> like, and I hate that I, I said it just for this. Right. Well, it's you in know, the right for educational, yeah, Exactly. For edu- like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to talk about these harder topics because it just all comes down to education. Like you, we need to be teaching our children, and our youth about like their actual correct autonomy terms. Like you have a vagina, you have a penis, mm-hmm. maybe you don't have either, maybe you're confused about it, it doesn't matter, but right. we need to be talking about that because it's natural, like everyone has something. Mm-hmm. And you're exposed, again, nowadays you're exposed to everybody online who has every sort of different exactly. type of other thing that yeah. you can't even imagine. Yeah, and us, you know, growing up, I feel like we're like the tail end of social media like we still grew up you and i you Mm -hmm. know when we were born 98 yeah yeah i was born 99 so 
we still had a bit of that like lack of kind of social media influence right. at least for a little bit i mm-hmm. know i did and that's why we have to be the bridge I feel exactly like. and i and that's why you know we think like oh this generation sucks but no this generation is some of the smartest people exactly it's gonna, we're gonna be completely influential mm-hmm. with these topics that are so important like racial injustices like lack of sexual education mm-hmm. um sexual assault awareness right. all these things that we're not harped on or instilled talked about in, in our, instilled exactly yeah. and yeah no, our definitely. generation now is going to be i would hope so completely more educated right on and, these topics and, and these mature, are the important mature. exactly these are the important topics in life honestly mm-hmm. in my opinion yeah like well i mean coming back to what we were talking like love mm-hmm. is like one of the biggest emotions that you will ever feel in your life absolutely one of the most influential things that'll change your day completely yeah. like if you wake up today and you just had a heartbreak you know mm-hmm. it's gonna hurt you wake up and you're just new newly found newly like wed people you know it's like oh the honeymoon phase you know yeah, what i mean yeah. it's like the and that most is so amazing real also, thing yeah, yeah. For, for for sure yeah and any stage honeymoon stages and any by stage i mean like middle school relationship high school relationship oh, yeah, college yeah. relationship past college mm-hmm we don't even know real. yeah we no. don't even know anymore what those are but Exa- i know right <laughs> it's like everything out. yeah no yeah I'm it's just find out what they are. it's so important it all goes down to education it's the baseline of everything mm-hmm. because those are the ones that are going to grow up and hopefully well, make you a find, change you find hope through children that's why people yeah. have kids in the first place Absolutely. you know it's like they're just like well i think a lot of people want to make a change in the world right i think mm-hmm. that's like whether it's because you want to be like a legend or you want to have like the best moral influence you can yeah or some people want to have a shitty influence on the world you know what i mean yeah uh before they like find themselves but i think most people want to make the best decisions that they can make to see how this world goes on and you know consequences are also and that's where religion comes in again where Mm -hmm. you know you want to make the best decision because it's your own consequence as well as everybody else's consequence and i think that's important also because you know obviously we live in the united states of america and religion is extremely enforced and it's in a lot of our like political whatever and exactly it's it's very forced but you know not every not everyone is religious you can be spiritual you could be whatever. nothing you can yeah. be whatever. whatever i feel like as long Atheist, as you are yeah. you know doing what you think is morally right and like you know what i mean just be like a good person and like if you have mm-hmm. sex before you're married you're not gonna go to hell that's you know what i mean and and so many people are taught that though which is very sad and it's super damaging because regardless of if you're teaching abstinence only you're still curious you're still sexually mm-hmm curious about these things it's just exactly it's It's natural you know yeah it's it's a completely natural thing and so many people are like think it's taboo and i even know when i was growing up i thought it was completely taboo to want to watch porn or like Mm -hmm. masturbate or anything like that well so here's a question do you think it's taboo to let yourself commit to love even though you know it's possibly temporary i'm gonna say absolutely Sorry, say that one more time. So do you think it's like, for me, sometimes it's, it seems kind of taboo in a way, or it seems almost wrong to like yeah. go into a relationship hoping that it'll be, you know, like I said, I'm a yeah, romantic. Yeah, like love's not real, like yeah, all that like, type of like shit. Yeah, like love isn't real, but yeah. be, go, being a romantic is like, but I want it to be, right. you know I, I mean? feel like I'm the same. I'm a bit of like a hopeless romantic too. Right. So um, is it bad to go into a relationship? I would say no, but I, I would also say that's where, like, your, not only your sexual maturity, which I've learned a lot about recently, but, like, your maturity overall, and, you know, I, I have been a victim to this, where, you know, my past relationship, I was like, this is it, and if it doesn't work out, fuck love. Well, yeah, like, love no, is not real, love, and yeah. just recently, I started thinking differently, but that'll circle back to what I was saying before, it's like, everything you go, you experience, like, love-wise, relationship-wise, anything, is an experience. And I feel like you have to kind of be aware of that Mm -hmm. beforehand, during, after. Yeah, and, yeah, that's, I think that's one of the hardest parts. That's why I meditate, and that's why I try to be mindful. Like, just mindfulness in general is, like, thinking... I mean, it's seeing yourself, like, you know you're going to change, right? You know you're going to be... The the fact that we're 
different people from three years ago, two years yeah. ago, whatever. And you, sometimes year. you're not aware of it until, like, mm -hmm. like... While you're in it. Yeah, while you're in it. Like, well, personally, I'm like, oh, I'm changing right now. And, like, <laughs> you don't realize it really until, like, I don't know, like, a year later. Like, wow, like, I completely changed at this point. And, like, well, you don't realize it. I think that it. changes with age, though, because you yeah. said, like, right now, you know that you've noticed that you're in a transitional period. A absolutely, yeah. yeah but sometimes, know. like, I know I've looked back before, I don't know, like, high school or even before, maybe not before then, but... I know when I first came to college, at least, excuse me, came to my freshman year of college, mm -hmm. looked back to my high school years, I was like, wow, I was completely different. So it's like, I feel like just acknowledging the change and knowing that where you're at now, like you're still, there's years and years to change again. And right. you're going to go through like multiple changes throughout your life. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, definitely. And see, I get very meta about things like this, but to keep it, to keep it. You get mad? In, no, meta, where oh. I just like think very like mindful and uh -huh. very like third person. Um, to keep it kind of tied down to love a little bit. Mm -hmm. I just think. Yeah, bring us back. Bring please. us back. Yeah. <laughs> like you said, I think it's just important to realize what love is. Yeah. And the fact that it is cyclical in nature, mm. but you have to realize that <laughs> there's a lot I got in front of me that I wanted to talk about mm -hmm. with it. Um, but I think there's a lot to realize, like, after you get through that honeymoon phase or that, you know, there is going to be a cyclical period where you don't love a person after you've decided to love them for Absolutely, forever. You know yeah. what I mean? So I think, at least within my family, like, we don't have divorce in my family. Like, divorce oh, really? is not allowed. Your parents are still together? Yeah. My, yeah. Oh, really? It's, and it's not, like, a religious thing. It's not like, a spiritual thing. I was going to ask if it it's was, just, like, like, a, a traditional, like... You marry and then you stay with that person. Yeah, like you like, work it out. It's like a loyalty thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that's there is... very extremely admirable, honestly. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, they, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, mean, I haven't experienced it yet, but it, it mm -hmm. is very admirable, and I enjoy that fact about my family. You know yeah. what I mean? But again, that kind of puts the pressure on me to like, what if I, you know? It, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It, yeah. It, and is it bad to like stop loving somebody? Absolutely, absolutely not. Right. That's the thing, and. That's what, that's been like the harder thing for me to kind of have a grasp on, at least recently. And I'm not trying to keep circling back to my like most recent no, relationship. No, but that's just our closest example. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. And you know, I'm still, I'm 21 years old. I, I have many, many, hopefully many years to live, <laughs> and, you know, more relationships to experience. But, you know, I was so set that like, oh, this is it. And the other person did not feel that necessarily, which was so hard for me to understand at first. And I mean, I, I, our relationship ended months ago and I, as of recently, I was still having issues with it, but it's like, I think you always are. Gonna yeah. Have. You're still going to think about it, but it's also like, if you stop loving someone, that's, if you want to keep it going, you want to keep it working, that's great. And But sometimes you just can't. And that, sometimes there's nothing, it's too hard. Exactly. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that. You outgrow people. You have different outlooks on life. You just you can change completely, which is fine. And I know some people or some religions or some outlooks on life are very much against that, which is fine if it works for you. But... At the end of the day, I feel like it's extremely personalized. Like if you, if you can't love someone anymore, you just can't, and and that's it. Mm -hmm. And it's totally personalized to you, and no one knows better than you. Right. You know what I mean? Like, no one will know. I think you still have that love in you. I yeah. think there's still a part of you that loves that person. Oh, absolutely. And I feel like that's the thing with either first loves or any kind of super strong love. Like you're still gonna really care for that person and you're going to love them a lot regardless totally. of what happened but I don't think it's inherently bad to let go of that. Yeah, yeah let go honestly. of it stop if you're the one letting go or if you're one if you're the one being let go of like mm -hmm. you have to not be able to <laughs> that's the hard part is not judging the person that doesn't absolutely want to and, love you and that's the thing where it comes to maturity I feel like because right, yeah. It's so hard to see other people's side of things, mm -hmm. especially someone who you have known for so long or maybe you've mm -hmm. been with for so long. Yeah, and you, like, think you know how they think. Absolutely. And then they come you're out like, with how this how could thought. you do this? Yeah, like, how could you not? Yeah, you're like, you don't love me anymore. How? Like, yeah. they're, they're, you just, that's not true. Like, I'll give you some time. That's not true. But, right. you know what I mean? Like, that's not inherently true. And maybe someone has been there before. But, you don't, I, I feel like personally you don't, and this is something that I've had 
I've had a hard time grasping that like you don't owe anything to anyone. Mm -hmm. Realistically, you really don't. And they don't owe you. Absolutely not. And and they don't owe you anything. Mm -hmm. So Which is really sad. But it's also it is sad. It's a fact of life. Absolutely. It's a hard thing to get over because when you know, I was just I was dumped, honestly, like a few months ago from my relationship and I was like Really, like you, you owe you. I deserve, like, <laughs> you know what I mean. Because, I'm like, yeah. I deserve your love because we've been together for X amount of months, years, etc. Right. But that's absolutely not true. Like, right. you, no one owes you anything. You don't owe them anything. That's mm-hmm. that's the end of it. It's like, if you're not feeling anything, but it's hard to come. To I know it's it's a hard blow, but it's it a hard blow. But it's it the takes truth. a lot of time to. And I think it's a it's a um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a noble effort. To, to try to come to terms with that. As long as you yeah. know what's right. And yeah. the fact that you're trying, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, just don't, <laughs> just try to distance yourself from, the, from those toxic yeah. thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's, it's different for everyone. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you may have to not see them anymore, block them, you know, we're in the age of blocking. You know right. what I mean? Like, yeah. social media, like, <laughs> I hate, I sound like such like a Gen X, and like, you gotta block them. But honestly, like, it's completely unique to everyone. So it's like, no one owes you anything, period. Right. You, and vice versa, you don't owe anyone. Period. You don't owe anyone anything, period. Period. <laughs> period. Uh, yeah, uh, so I think we've covered a lot mm-hmm. already. Um, we could go for probably like hours about this. We uh, we're an hour in. I don't know if you realize that or not. I don't, but I'm like... Yeah, no, I'm feeling it for yeah. sure. Uh, but I kind of just wanted to, you know, I went through the... E- the Eros, the, the Ludos, which is the game, and that's kind of where mm-hmm. we went off on a tangent. Mm-hmm. But to bring it back to it is there's also the, the Storge, which is uh, love as a friendship. Like, Storge is natural affection. So it's like for family, people that you actually have similar interest, interests with, like in friends. And then, you know, also like development, people that you've gone through a development phase with that where you're like, okay, like, I love this person because we've gone through shit together, Mm -hmm. you know? Obviously, the ideal version of love is to have Eros, Ludus, and Storch all Mm -hmm. together. Like, Mm -hmm. the erotic, the the fun games, like, the back and forth and whatnot, and the, 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 like, Like natural love. Like, the natural familiar, yeah. Yeah. Uh, But I don't think it's it's easily achievable, you know? It's not. And I feel like that's why... I don't want to say love is hard to achieve because that's a little, like... Meta. Damaging yeah. a little bit, yeah, a little Dam- meta, but damaging. honestly, like, in my opinion, I feel like true love is, I don't want to say it's hard to find, but no, like is. when you get it those is. three, it's, is that those three, yeah, is those that the three. end of it, the three stages, yeah. like, and that's why I think your true love comes through exploration. Absolutely, because something I read, it was like, you first start liking somebody because like, oh, she was so fun and romantic mm-hmm. and that's the ludicrous appeal or like. He he seems so grounded and like mm-hmm. and like reliable, you know, and that's the that's the storage. But but in the end, like those can also be the things that kind of in, deter you from that. Break person. it, yeah, absolutely. Just so like oh, she was so fun and romantic, turns into oh, she's just like sporadic. You yeah, know? yeah. Or he was so reliable and grounded, it's like oh, he's boring, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So it, it it is really hard to see once that initial reaction of one of those three kind of like springs mm-hmm. at you yeah. and like. I feel like that's also where you are at in life. It's like which one of those appeals to you. Mm-hmm. But again, it's it's having the knowledge of the three different types and like trying to apply them to all different sorts and like where you are and not only them but you. You know. Yeah. Within that relationship. Absolutely, and I think it's important too. And I've never really like researched or like I don't really know a lot about a lot of these stages, but I feel like it's super important to at least know a little bit about them because. If you go through something that's failed or maybe, like, you don't feel the same about someone and you feel bad about it, it's, like, I truly feel like everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. And us as humans are meant to love someone and, like, have companionship. And that's not for everyone, obviously. Mm -hmm. But But it is. It does give meaning to existence. Absolutely. It gives meaning to your life. And you can can love your alone time, which you absolutely should. Mm -hmm. Self-love and your alone time is completely, like, so important and, in my opinion, necessary Mm -hmm. in your life Mm -hmm. because I feel like... You can't have love without love for yourself. Absolutely. I feel like you can't truly give your all to someone or love someone 
before you completely accept and love yourself. And I, I just think that's a fact of life. Right. So I feel like knowing those stages, like when you find the one, all of the stages will completely make sense. But and you match. think that it, is the one. I honestly do because, you know, I thought my last relationship, like, I'm still very young. I started dating my, I started my last relationship as a senior in high school and I'm a senior in college now. And, you know, you thought you knew what it was. Absolutely. I I absolutely did. And since breaking up and, you know, lack of communication, lack of contact, I'm like, yeah, that's maybe not what I wanted. And whether that is, um on the other person's end or on your end I feel like when you I really do believe in like true love absolutely like you can go through multiple loves in life like true and I feel like every one that you experience is a complete lesson like for for sure your end point because I I do feel like everyone does have someone Mm -hmm. in the world and you don't know where they are you don't know what you have to go through to get to them you can go through absolute hell and meet your perfect match. Like, and you meet all those three stages. Like, mm-hmm. and then it can just go to shit. It could go to shit. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's the thing about life. Like it's just completely that's what, unpredictable. See, that's my counterpoint to everything happens for a reason mm-hmm. is like, I think that's a belief in itself. It could go to shit. It absolutely, I think it, that's a belief that in stems itself. back to everything. Everything is right. a, and theory, it's, it's, a belief, or right. whatever. And it's nice to Based have on that. anything. Yeah. It's, um, it's a... I'm not sure if I personally... It's a fallback, and that's totally fine. It's like a comfortability thing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, you're like, oh, I'll find my person. Right. And that's may and not I mean, be inherently and, and true. Okay. Yeah. Your, but, your but person... Okay that thought. Absolutely. Your person may be yourself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> it, it totally could be. And yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't know a lot of people, but... Because I'm, you know, I'm still, like, a, a child. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, you know what I mean? It's talking to older people, and they're like, oh, I know somebody in, like, Chicago, and I know somebody yeah, like, in right. Florida or whatever. You're it's like, like bro, what? I know people in Ohio. I know. I'm like, I know people, like, down the street on yeah. like, Mill Street. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know them. So it's like... But your network definitely. Yeah. No, it network. totally does. And as, like, college students, like, you and I, at least, mm-hmm. you feel like your circle is so small, and it's just, it's not true at all. You're right. going to go... Something you're gonna, you told me recently is, like, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm 22, it's like you may not have even met the love of your life yet. Absolutely, you know, and that—that's what I tell myself. And I'm telling you this. I'm like, yeah, you have met the love of your life. You haven't either. So it's like, no, but seriously though, like, I tell you that because I have hope for you. But I'm like, why don't I have hope for myself? Like, that's true because maybe you are, your pat. Like you know, you said you were talking to that girl and it didn't like go how you wanted it to go. Right. And now you're. As of recently, you got this new job, Mm -hmm. and you're, like, kind of nervous about moving to a completely different state and not knowing anyone, and I'm, like, it could be, like, exactly what's in the cards for you, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I think that's a very hopeful. Yeah, yeah, it it is hopeful. It's not, like... No, and I like it. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, I I mean, and and I'm not a... And I'm circling back... My key term today is I'm circling back, but I'm circling (laughs) back, you know, I was extremely religious... I wasn't extremely religious. Extremely religious as, like, a younger child but I was at one point and that I would consider myself more I was considering myself as atheist for a minute but I think I'm more like spiritual in a sense sure I feel like thinking that you do have a person somewhere and everything happens for a reason is it is comfortable and it it makes you feel good and us as like humans you know what I mean with like hearts and souls you want to like you want to feel comfortable you want to know like oh something better is coming right and that might not always be true but but it's the nice thought to of have that the thought image. of it is yeah the thought it's of the noble. image is exactly it's enough to keep you going and right. i feel like that's it's all that matters <laughs> yeah something yeah like that can keep you some of us up. like some of us need a sign to keep going especially right. in these times oh, like yeah anxiety and depression dude fucking skyrocketing yeah, for sure. especially with the Suicide pandemic are through the roof with everything. absolutely yeah. and well, that's what we need we need so, so a reminder of, of hope and yeah and, and that's and, that's fine and, mm-hmm. yeah and i think that is a good place to probably end on mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah i very very happy hopeful message yeah, something and better is coming. Something sure. better is coming. And if yeah. not, it'll come eventually. Probably. Yeah, even if it's not love, maybe it's a opportunity of some sort. Opportunity. Job opportunity, yeah. et cetera. Just a friendship, even? Absolutely, friendship, relationship of some kind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's something better is coming. 
Something, something good. Something good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for coming out, Taylor. I Absolutely. Yeah, it was a good time. Literally. <laughs> Drown in it. Drown in it. <laughs> The episode literally blew your mind, didn't it? It literally made you want to blow up, get up and go have sex, go love. And also made you realise none of it's worth it either and that life is really sad. But it continues on and so do we. And I really want to thank Taylor for being around OU and literally inspiring me. Inspiring me to keep going. (laughs) And uh, yeah. Thanks for listening. I love you, man. Okay, bye. Uh, I just want to apologize for the, for the hardcore like metal music, uh, which I don't usually do for any of the episodes. But I, I just figured it fit really well with like the excited British guy that wants you to do the best in the world. And yeah, that's why. So get off your bloody ass and go do something then.